Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, of course, Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, sort of an average patch Tuesday. We have a total of four vulnerabilities that are being addressed here that were either already known or have already been exploited in the wild. Probably the most significant vulnerability here is CVE 2017-8759. This is the vulnerability that already has been exploited in the wild. Uh, FireEye has a good write-up about it. They assign it to FinFisher. Now, the vulnerability here is actually in a .NET component that parses SOAP. But the way it's being exploited is via Microsoft Office. What FireEye saw here was Word documents being delivered that uh, then when opened, not in protected mode, are triggering this vulnerability. So Office or Microsoft Word is really more the delivery vector. The actual vulnerability is in .NET. Typical for FinFisher, this has been used in targeted attacks, so nothing in widespread use yet. Microsoft rated the exploitability with zero, well, meaning that it's already been used in the wild. The other three already disclosed or exploited uh, issues aren't really all that critical. First one, well, another fix for the Prodcom, Prodbone vulnerability, this time affecting Microsoft's HoloLens. Don't think it's really in that widespread use to be that significant, really. Then we do have another update for Device Guard. This is really more a security feature bypass. And finally, an update to Microsoft. Microsoft Edge's content security policy. There was a vulnerability that allowed you to bypass content security policy in Microsoft Edge. This has already been disclosed, but the overall content security policy, yes, it is a nice feature. And often the policies being deployed are not really all that tight, so they are usually probably easier ways to bypass it than relying on this vulnerability. And then there was also an update for the Microsoft Office Defense in depth. And now I haven't really been able to find a lot of details what this uh, really entails. It is labeled as being already exploited in the wild, probably more something like a security feature bypass in this case. And of course, we also got an update for Flash from Adobe, which is included in the September Microsoft update for browsers that include Flash. So in short, watch the .NET issue, definitely patch that. Also apply the browser-related patches. They're always a big target. But other than that, just follow your standard patch process in order to apply these patches. But well, Microsoft wasn't the only big security news today. We also received a word of a set, actually eight distinct different Bluetooth vulnerabilities that were discovered by Armis Labs. They named these vulnerabilities Blueborn, and what's really sort of unique about it is that it pretty much affects every single operating systems. There are two vulnerabilities specific to the Bluetooth stack in Linux and the Linux kernel. There are three vulnerabilities for Android. We do even have one for Windows here and one in Apple's low energy audio protocol. All affected vendors have released patches for these vulnerabilities. Of course, one of the tricky issues here is all these Bluetooth devices that are Linux-based, which are vulnerable. Armis demonstrated the vulnerability against a smartwatch and was actually able to achieve full remote code execution on the smartwatch using a Bluetooth, including, for example, eavesdropping using the microphone built in to the smartwatch. 
Of course, exploiting the vulnerability does require some physical proximity, but really all you need to be, you need to be in Bluetooth range. You do not need to pair with the device in order to exploit these vulnerabilities. So there is no user interaction required here. Now on Linux in particular, the vulnerability can be mitigated with address space layout randomization. A lot of the major Linux distributions do have that enabled, so they are not exploitable here while the vulnerability still exists. However, once you're looking at embedded devices and the like, you're much less likely going to find ASLR enabled. Now Android is a little bit of a special case here. Android does use ASLR, but in this particular case it was possible to bypass ASLR using another information disclosure vulnerability in the kernel, which leaks the information necessary to create the exploit. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.